In a previous video about the inhomogeneous wave equation, we talked about writing down the solution by means of using the Green's function method. In fact, that is the way how we can write down the formal solution and also determine the necessary con boundary conditions that should be used if we want to get a complete picture of the solution. In this video, we shall find out an explicit form of the Green's function associated with this equation. Alright, so this is our inhomogeneous wave equation and we know that the corresponding uh, equation for Green's function can be written as uh, this differential operator right here, which we also called the Lambertian operator, acting on the Green's function. So the Green's function is supposed to be a function of four variables here, so which is R and T, basically the location where we want to find out the field, and also another set of variable R and R prime and T prime, which uh, gives us the position of the source which generates the field in this circumstance. So this should be equal to the unit source which is delta r minus r prime times delta t minus t prime. So this is the associated Green's function. There are several ways to solve this equation. One of the way is to write down the Fourier transform of these functions and from that we get a contour integral uh, depending on the route you take uh, you get different solutions and that gives us the uh, necessary expression for the Green's function. However, in this circumstance, we can evade that way of doing a contour integral if you're not familiar with it. So this video, the part that we take, uh, you will understand it even if you are not well versed at complex analysis. So what do we do? The first thing we should do is uh, to notice a simplification. How can we simplify this? Well. If you look at the source, then the dependence, uh, or rather the relationship of R and R prime is through this special form where we have R minus R prime. And the same thing goes for T and T prime, and, and they appear only where this specific combination of T and T prime. So from this observation, we can assume that our Green's function has uh, the arguments in that form as well. So instead of using writing that separately, we can presume without l the loss of generality that R and R prime are also related in that way. So we can instead write R minus R prime and T minus T prime. So that's the uh, first stage simplification. We can further simplify it by taking the source at the origin. So for example, if the source is somewhere here, I'll, we shift our origin to that place. So the source stays at the origin. And uh, by making that simplification, we can write r prime equal to zero, which is also a vector, and t prime equal to zero. Besides, we can always substitute uh, this forms in the place of r and t later. Once we have got the full expression, then we can uh, write down the general prescription for it. So that allows us to further simplify the expression for Green's function, which is g is only a function of r and t, right? And uh, we have this operator, which is also sometimes written at the box square operator. 
So if the box square operator acts on it, on the right hand side we get delta of r times delta of t. So now this is our Green's equation. So that's that doesn't seem like a major simplification, but we need to employ all the help we can get. So uh, that's what we shall be working on. Now this is the final form that we have derived, uh, but we can carry out one further simplification and that is we can drop these vector signs from these places because from the previous discussion it has been abundantly clear that uh, the special combination uh, means in this context since we have taken the source to be at the origin the field is only related uh, via radial distance and therefore it only depends on r and not theta and phi which are uh, the other two coordinates angular coordinates and since our solution it doesn't depend on them therefore it's just r uh, which it depends on so therefore uh, we have dropped the vector sign. So I think this is the ultimate simplification that we can reach and this allows us to write down nabla squared acting on g minus 1 by c squared the second order time derivative of g equals negative delta r t. Now if we expand this portion in the spherical coordinate then this is basically the Laplacian of g and since g depends on r only and not theta and phi write 1 over r squared d r acting on r squared dr which is acting on g. Now we expand this we get 1 over r squared sitting outside and this first acts on this one so we get twice r partial derivative with respect to r plus r squared and then second order partial derivative with respect to r acting on g. So if we take this into account we get twice r divided by r squared which is 2 divided by r partial derivative with respect to r plus the second order partial derivative of g with respect to r. Now, this is pretty straightforward, so here comes the trick. Let us write this term like follows. First we write one of the contribution and then we write the other half of the contribution, right? And then if I factor out 1 over r, what do I get? I get first order partial derivative of g with respect to r and then r times the second order partial derivative of g. Now this is an interesting form. Why this is an interesting form? Let's say I have x times f where f is a function of x and I differentiate it with respect to x, right? So what happens? We get first f and then x is differentiated which gives us 1 and then x stays the same and then f is differentiated, right? So instead of f 
we can imagine it to be the first order derivative of uh, g with respect to r and then r times the second order derivative with respect to r. So in return that should give us what? r times the first order derivative with respect to r and this whole thing differentiated with respect to r. So therefore we get 1 over r and then this plus 1 over r right and then the derivative and then r times the derivative all right so that's the first step but notice on the second step what we can do is to take uh, or rather factor out this whole thing and then I'm sorry this should be r and then we should get g plus r times d d d r and notice we can apply this trick again so this takes us to this expression which is 1 over r and then d2 dr2 r times g and this is brilliant for different reasons uh, that will become apparent uh, within the next few steps so remember we started with this expression where we have laplacian of g minus 1 over c squared d2 dt2 and then acting on g right and this was negative delta r delta t however we have just noticed that this can be written as 1 over r and the second order special derivative and then acting on r times g. Notice here we have derivative with respect to t and t and r are supposed to be independent coordinates. Uh, so therefore I can write this as 1 over c squared, right? 1 over r and then to compensate 1 over r I can multiply this g with r and since uh, they're independent of each other r can move right through this differential operator without changing anything so this is fantastic because our equation can now be written as 1 over r and then second order derivative with respect to space minus 1 by c squared second order derivative with respect to time acting on this whole thing r times g okay and this is negative delta of r direct delta of t now since partial derivative uh, commute with respect to each other we can write instead 1 over c time derivative minus uh, the special derivative time derivative plus special derivative and on the right hand side we write simply delta r and delta t so uh, notice that I have changed the order of the derivatives and uh, to account for that I have remove the negative sign on the right hand side so if you do uh, sort of multiply them you'll see that we get back to this operator right here okay and we are looking for solutions only in the region r greater than zero right because uh, 
if r is equal to zero, we see that this thing blows up. And on the right hand side, this one blows up as well. So therefore, uh, the solution we are looking for is r greater than zero. And since we are considering the region where r is greater than zero, so then of course we can write, I think I missed something in here. We should write r times b. So that's missing. Uh, so if r is indeed greater than zero, then this right hand side is equal to zero. And we can also send this r to the other side. And finally, we're left with this equation here. 1 over c minus this. And then uh, 1 over c time derivative plus the special derivative acting on r times g equals zero. So this is what we are solving essentially. Thank you.